Assalamu alaikum. The greatest misguidances for one to adopt a full censor, a wrong answer to the question of why he is here and what happens after death. And the problem is that there are many answers and only one answer is correct. And each person will suffer the consequence of his choice. The story is big and we can consider that this life is the journey to search for an answer, a journey to choose. Viktor Frankl said, the greatest task for a person is to find meaning in his or her life. Allah says in the Quran, I didn't create jinn and humans except to worship me. You are here in this world to know the purpose of your existence and not to get pocket money, housing and a wife. While there are many answers, but we can say that all the answers presented are divided into two main sections. The first section is the answer that this universe is an absurd event with no value or creator and that man is descended from animals. The problem with this answer is that it leads to poisoning of everything and every value. Because if the universe is absurd and we are animals, this means the death of the meaning. The famous atheist philosopher Bertrand Russell said, man is a product of causes which had no provision of the end they were achieving, that his origin and everything are but the outcome of accidental collocations of atoms. The whole temple of man's achievement must be buried beneath the debris of the universe in ruins. Any attempt to offer optimism or search for value in an absurd universe that will soon collapse is a ridiculous attempt. The atheist Peter Atkin said, we are the children of chaos and the deep structure of change is decay. At root, there is only corruption. This is the bleakness we have to accept. In such a world, it is difficult to bear gratuitous torment in this life and suicide would be the most sincere devotion to nihilism. Therefore, the censor has a very high tax, an unbearable tax. Some may decide to live in contradiction by stealing from the initial goodness, the innate disposition to do good, to establish meaning, to establish value in this world. Unfortunately, the censor has no groundings for establishing meaning, for establishing goodness, for establishing value. Within the censor, there is nothing but pure nothingness. The gas chambers in Auschwitz were used by those who believed in the censor. The atheist Yuval Noah Harari said, There is no gods in this universe, no nations, no money, no human rights, no laws, and no justice outside the imagination of human beings. So according to this answer, we humans are blobs of organized mud, as Sean Carroll said. Within this answer, defending the man's right to life is a betrayal of our animal origin. So this answer destroys all meaning and poisons every value. Is this answer livable or a livable Think and then decide. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Verily, this worldly life is cursed, except for the light of the prophets of Allah shines upon. Man's need for the message of the prophets is greater than his need for everything. This world will not come to an end as long as the legacy of the prophets lasts. When it disappears entirely, the hour will be established. Sartre said, If God exists, then existence is consistent. And if there is no God, then existence is terrifying. But Sartre, in his conversation with Simone de Beauvoir, said, I don't feel that I'm a product of a chance, a speck of dust in the universe, but someone who was expected, prepared, prefigured, in short, a being whom only a creator could but hear. And this idea of a creating hand refers to God. Allah. This is a compulsive sense of existence of meaning, existence of value, felt by the founder of atheism in the last century in Europe. This is the innate compulsive feeling that there is an answer other than the atheistic answer. Let me now present to you the second section of the answers to the question of why we are here and what happens beyond death. And you have to compare the two sections and begin to choose. The second section contains the proofs and evidences that you need to consider and think about. Among these proofs are that you exist within fine-tuned giant universe that is suddenly appeared with all its critical cosmological constants. Also, don't forget that you exist and at the same time you didn't create yourself and you didn't come into being from nothingness. Allah says, or were they created by nothing? Or are they their own creators? Other proof 
you have the initial goodness, the sense of value, you have the knowledge of good and evil, and you know that these are objective, not subjective meanings. Besides, there are prophets of Allah came to you, messengers came to invite you to what is compatible with the innate disposition, compatible with the meaning and value of existence. But wait a moment, these proofs are provided by your religions, and every religion claims it to be the true, right or wrong. In effect, the existence of many religions doesn't mean that I should deny your religions. And then move to the first section, the section of nihilism. Otherwise, I would be like a fitting judge who see the several parts claim to have the truth. So he sentences everyone to prison to spare himself the trouble of investigating to decide the case. But a just judge, a wise judge, is the one who investigates the facts of the case. To make a ruling and decide who amongst them is in the right and who is in the wrong. When we look into religions and examine the creed about Allah, we find that Allah, God, is one in all religions. All religions believe in Allah, the originator of heavens and earth. There is an innate human consensus in this issue. Allah said in the Quran, our God and your God is only one. But the difference between Islam and all other religions is that all other religions have set up other gods beside Allah. All religions share some part of polytheism, be it little or much, while Islam remains the only pure monotheistic religion. No religion has remained upon the pure monotheism that the prophets called the four. The monotheism of Fitra means in need disposition, except Islam. The greatest feature of Islam is Aqidah, the creed about Allah, a creed that is as clear as some. There is no religion that has sanctified Allah and affirmed it is absolute transcendence from humanity and commanded pure and complete monotheism except Islam. If you look into this universe and picture a creator for it, only believe in one God will spring to your mind. You will not picture multiple gods or pagan earthly gods or gods which come forth from other gods. Islam is the innate creed of monotheism, the only creed which your mind accepts. But do you choose Islam just because it's a, a pure monotheistic religion? In fact, there is no religion upon pure innate monotheism other than Islam. And this in and of itself is a strong argument. Allah says in the Quran, Say, a prophet, he is Allah, one and indivisible. Allah, the sustainer, needed by all. He has never had offspring, nor was he born, and there is none comparable to him. If we assume that Islam is false, is it reasonable for the one God to leave the mankind without a true message? Can the only monotheistic message be invalid? Is this reasonable? But also you have to know that beside monotheism, there are many other proofs for the validity of Islam. Once you look at the person who brought the message, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you will recognize that he is a prophet from Allah and that his message is true. The person who claims it to be a prophet is either the most truthful person or the most dishonest person, and only the most ignorant of people cannot tell one from the other. Who claims to be a prophet is either the most truthful person because he is really a prophet, and it's only natural for him to be the most truthful person, or he is the most dishonest person because he is lying about a serious matter. He claims he has received revelations, and he will need to lie every minute. So the claim into prophethood is either the most truthful person in the world or the most dishonest person. In psychiatry, there is what is called pathological lying, which is a symptom of certain personality disorders. Pathological liars have some characteristics. They are opportunistic, cowards, betrayers, treacherous. They don't keep their promises and their lies are easily exposed due to multiple lies. Far be these characteristics from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rather, his qualities were the complete opposite. Read his biography and see for yourself. The issue of the Prophet's truthfulness is subject to the consensus of both the infidels and Muslims. For even the most hostile people to him admitted that he is the most truthful of people. They said, we have not experienced any lie from you. That is why Allah says in the Quran, or because they fail to recognize their messenger. And so they deny them. They know him, know his truthfulness. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not have sacrificed their lives for the sake of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they would not have left their homes, their money, and migrate from Mecca to Medina and engage in wars and let their bodies be torn by swords, knowing that he is a liar. 
or doubting his truthfulness, you can read this book, The Last Prophet, to learn about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his biography, and the innumerable proofs of his prophethood. The book is available in both Arabic and English versions. The link to them in the video description. Beside the previous proofs, what about the greatest sign in Islam? The greatest miracle, which is the Holy Quran. The Quran, which brought guidance and answers to all questions that every soul yearns for. And it brought knowledge, sciences, and the stories of past nations, and it corrected what was in the Bible. The first book in the Arabic language is the Quran, and it was suddenly revealed to an illiterate man. With all its guidance, knowledge, and sciences, how can this be? Rather, it challenged the Arabs to come up with a surah like it. The prophetic era is the finest era in the field of eloquence. The rules of Arabic grammar have been laid down on the basis of this era. Yet no one amongst the Arabs could take up the challenge of producing the like of a Quranic surah. They found that using the sword was easier than taking up this challenge. And the Quran told them that Islam will spread through the world. This was a fantasy in that era, given the size of this pagan tribe Mecca. Indeed, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam triumphed, and his mission spread, and the giant empires accepted Islam. Then in his last days, this verse was revealed. Today, I have perfected your faith for you, completed my favor upon you, and has chosen Islam as your way. Islam was perfected and completed. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was died a few days after the revelation of this verse. Islam established the longest and the most merciful civilization that the world has ever known, the Islamic civilization. When the infallible message of Islam comes with monotheistic creed and these proofs, does this not prompt you to think about this answer? And that it may be the only answer to the question of meaning value and purpose of your existence, the only answer to the question of why you are here in this world. I want to add another proof for the validity of Islam. The prophets throughout history were telling their people about the coming of the prophet of the end of time from an illiterate pagan land. And some of them spoke openly about the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his name. Allah gave the prophet Haggai the glad tidings of the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the illiterate from an illiterate environment. I will shake all nations, and the desired by all nations will come. The desired in Hebrew text is Hamdat, the one to whom belongs praise, the other name of Muhammad. The desired of all nations will come. Muhammad of all nations will come. And the word nations in the Hebrew text means Gentiles. Muhammad of the Gentiles will come. The link to this video with English subtitle where I cover this topic in detail in the video description. Allah says in the Quran, Who follow the messenger, the Gentile prophet, described in the Torah and Gospel. And the prophet Isaiah heralded Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told that he would be sent in Mecca. Allah said to prophet Isaiah, He is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. The common prophet will raise the call to prayer. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kidar lives rejoice. The call to prayer will be raised at the hands of this prophet in the settlements of Kidar. Who is Kidar? Kidar is the son of Ishmael, and the Kidar is the grandfather of Adnan and the grandfather of Quraysh. Quraysh is the place of Mecca, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived. This Prophet will raise the call to prayer in the homes of Quraysh in Mecca. This Prophet is from 3,000 years ago, and it is still in Torah to this day. The call to prayer will also be raised in Sila. Let the people of Sila sing for joy. Mount Sila is located in Medina, exactly near the Prophet's mosque. The cult prayer will be raised in Mecca and Medina by this coming Prophet. 
sing to the Lord a new song. Sing His praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and those who dwell in them, let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices, the settlements where Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing aloud. Let them shout for joy from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory. Could they give you another proof, the Scripture of the people of the book? Herald the time of the advent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In Assumption of Moses, which is apocryphal, non-canonical book, but it is written before Islam, and some of the people of the book believed in it. In this book, Moses tells that the message of this coming Prophet will be to all creation, and that Allah will punish the Gentiles through this Prophet, and that He will destroy all their idols. And then Moses told Joshua, the son of Nun, told them about the time of the advent of the coming Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, For from my death, assumption, until his advent, there shall be 1,750 years. Moses was buried around 1,200 BC, 1,750 years. Following this date, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent in a pagan nation and he destroyed all their idols. For these verses, the people of the book during the prophetic era of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew the time of his mission. A new prophet shall come soon from the Arabs. Salman al-Farisi was told by the scholar that he was studying under. The proofs for the authenticity of Islam are innumerable. And these proofs are unique and unparalleled in their strength. And no other religion is consistent with Allah's monotheism except Islam. Doesn't all of that reassure you about this answer? And this answer may be the only answer in this world, the only way, think and believe what you will. You are the only one responsible for your choice. Take your time to look into the proofs. Also, you might have to read Quran and look into the message it carries. The link to English translation of Quran in the video description. Think and make up your mind. See you soon. Assalamu alaikum. وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا اعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنت مرتفقا